My name is Ed King. I'm the marketing manager of ArtServe. If this is your first time interacting with ArtServe, let me be the first to say welcome and to let you know that ArtServe is a creative space which utilizes the power of the arts to supercharge the community. Today, along with the ArtServe staff and our panelists, we will endeavor to discuss a topic of immense importance to our arts community, the state of mental health in the age of COVID-19. We recognize that the artists and content creators of our community are struggling each day with the multitude of issues brought on by COVID, be it food equity, financial stress, family issues, healthcare, employment, and frankly, far too many challenges that we could possibly address in this very introduction. We also want our audience to know that whether you're an artist or not, we know that this conversation is a safe space for you. This event was created to explore the mental health challenges of COVID in a forum where people can be free to listen, talk, cry, and even laugh a little if they need to. Our goal is to allow the community to come together and share real, open, honest conversations about where we stand, coupled with a dialogue about solutions and ultimately a pathway towards healing. We realize that some of you may find this comment, uh, content, or some themes that we discuss to be challenging or maybe even disturbing to engage in. And if you feel like you are emotionally prepared to engage, please do. But if you want to take a moment to exit the conversation because this might be a little too much, no problem. We encourage you to come back when you're ready and replay this show at a time when you feel comfortable to engage in this conversation. And please type your comments into Zoom or Facebook chat. For those of you on Zoom, we invite you to let us know, let our producers know that you want to actually have your voice on air or if you want us to simply read your comment. And we want to hear from you guys. And so we have no problem elevating you guys to uh, hear your voice right here on the show. And on that note, I'm asking our audience to help create an atmosphere of mutual respect and sensitivity. I wanna thank you for attending this important discussion. Let's get started. First, I'd like to welcome the staff of ArtServe to join us uh, in this conversation. Uh, these are my coworkers, my colleagues, and these are people who uh, work every day to bring Art Serve Live alive to our community of artists in South Florida writ large. So I'm gonna take the spotlight off of myself and hopefully uh, we can take a look at the Art Serve uh, staff. And guys, please introduce yourself to our community and uh, let's start the show with a couple of introductions. Hi, I'm Jen. I work in marketing, uh, mostly with Ed. I've been at ArtServe a little over two years, and I'm really looking forward to today's discussion. Hi, everyone. I am Sophie Bonnet. I am the curator for ArtServe. And uh, like Jen, I am glad to be here, and I look forward um, to, to this session. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan. I am the operations manager at ArtServe. Um, I'm glad to be a part of this and look forward to everybody's participation. Awesome. And now I want, first of all, thanks a lot guys. That was awesome. And I'm really glad you're here with me to have this amazing conversation. Um, I want to now bring on the dynamic duo from Drive-By Therapy talk show. 
Dr. Latasha Russell, a clinical psychologist, and her show co-host, comedian Christopher Priester. Guys, please come on and uh, join us here on ArtServe Live. Oh, boy, we're here, Chris. Yeah, we're here. We're we here. Drive here. right there, but you think ArtServe is ready for us? Yeah, they're going to get the sober, Chris, because we're not in the club tonight, so I don't oh. have cocktails. This is amazing. They got me good and clear and focused. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. I wanted to ask you guys just to get started right off the bat. We have a lot of attendees on Zoom. We have a lot of attendees on Facebook. Right off the bat, what is drive-by therapy? Well, um, hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Tasha. And um, as uh, one of the, the, one of the, the co-hosts um, to Drive-By Therapy Talk Show, we do this every first Thursday usually face-to-face -face at a lounge called Crave here in Sunrise, Florida. Um, but obviously we've been more virtual um, since this all started in March. But basically it is a talk show where we actually like to think of it almost like group therapy on steroids. And you get to talk about anything that comes to mind, usually relevant to the actual topic at hand, which today is depression, which we know will then breed into anxiety and trauma and possibly addiction and boredom and Chris Priester is the stand-up comedian that does what he does very well alongside me every month. Um, and uh, we, we definitely take the um, guests right out of the audience. And virtually, in terms of Zoom, we're doing the same with you. So you have the freedom to call in, Zoom in, video in, and everything that you want to talk about, hopefully in these next 90 minutes. Um, we're able to get to you and answer your questions. And you'll have a little drive-by therapy, which means very brief therapy, but you kind of get to sit on the couch um, between now and 4.30. Chris? And they get it for free. If you want the real deal, Dr. <laughs> Tasha is very expensive on her couch. But I'm here as the comedian, 48 years of living, parent, teacher, father. So I bring all my life skills to go against Tasha's little book skills that she's learned out there in Cal Berkeley with her little doctor stuff. So I make it lighthearted because it, 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 a lot of guys don't like therapy. So Tasha and I met about three years ago at Hot 105 during a talk show. And we just looked at each other and said, hey, you want to do this every month? This is pretty cool. We got a lot of people to call in and talk about things they never talked about. So I'm here for the lighthearted part to get it going, even though depression is no joke, but sometimes I call it laughing and learning. My stage name is Chris Priester, the teacher, because I was a teacher. I taught kindergarten and first grade at six foot five. That's a whole very, other. Very scary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hush. No, I was not. I'm good hearted. Gentle giant. Well, guys, I'm so glad you're here. Um, this is our first time interacting with uh, Drive By Therapy. It's going to be new for you, new for us. Uh, we're, we're, we're ready to go. And yeah. so I want to break the ice and mm -hmm. I want to break the ice with our partners in Pinellas County. Uh, Lee Davis is from Creative Pinellas and they too have a group of artists, a community of artists who deal with the same issues that our artists deal with right here in South Florida. And what I wanted to do is start right off the bat with promoting her as a panelist to bring her onto the show and for, give her the first question to our uh, esteemed Drive-By Therapy panel. Uh, Lee Davis, are you with us? I'm with you. Hello, my ArtServe family. Hi, Lee, how are you? Hi, Sophie, hi, Ed, hi, Jennifer. Hey, Chris, hey, Doc. Hey, hey, <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I think that um, it's really important that we have these real truthful and sometimes difficult discussions. So I am grateful to have the, the platform to ask my question. Yes. So my first question is how can art help us see and break these repetitive negative patterns and help us develop and make habitual positive patterns? What kind of examples have you seen in the work that you've done? Tasha, you want that first or you want me? No, go ahead, go ahead with your art of comedy. Yeah, um, not to give too much of a backdrop, but I was 
before I was getting here, I was like, you know what, Tasha? I was thinking about my 48 years as a kid. Men weren't made to show emotion, mm -hmm. not to, mm. to show. And I'm sitting there thinking about all the men in my neighborhood. They, they worked, they were married, but after work, they got smashed. They drank beer, they drank liquor, they got drunk, and they hit repeat Monday through Saturday for 30 years till they, till they retire. And my brain was like, was that a form of depression? Were those men depressed mm. and didn't know how to let it out? And I'm thinking about all the spankings the kids got in my neighborhood. We called them whoopings. And daddy probably had built up all this anger and wham, just took it out at one time. But to answer your question, I say, I learned a lot of art watching those dudes. I learned a lot of comedy watching angry people. Um, I'm pretty sure we have some great singers and musicians and painters and, and poets who got all of their, who probably released their trauma instead of breaking windows, they probably put it on pen and paper or they put it on a canvas or they, or they started telling jokes. I, I think I, I probably was funny to deflect. Mm -hmm. Now that I think about it, I mean, I had that nice dad. He, I had to repeat myself all the time, Tasha. I would tell him something at night, and then that morning he'll be like, "Hey, what happened yesterday?" And I'm like, "Dude, I told you yesterday." And he had forgotten because they <laughs> they drank it away the whole night. So I learned to talk a lot because of that. Chris, do I need to call you Doctor Chris today? Is this is this no? What You're rubbing off on me, man. No, I love that it. Public school education is just Dr. going Tasha, is, right now. Is, is that is that real? I mean, is it is deflection? Well, Part, part of the part of the issue here. Oh my gosh, I love that. He said funny yeah. to deflect. So the, the the idea is that we actually need to go back to what was adaptive in terms of coping because we have plenty of maladaptive ways that we cope. And mm -hmm. so yours was comedy. Some are painting. Some is through painting. Some is through singing, as you said. Some is through dancing, getting into your body. A lot of times we forget that maybe in high school we were able to release that as you know as 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 athletes. athletes. And like 30 and 40 year olds and then we're like mm, I may or may not do yoga today because I don't feel like it when really we want to do it right because it'll actually make us feel better so to answer your question Lee my first thought was a lot of times in these last three months with this cabin fever right not nothing to look forward to possibly a lot of loss which is the grief grieving because there's a loss of income and a loss of um schedule our regular routine um even kind of a loss of the dream sometimes, right? There's a lot of tours that we had in place and now they're not here or a lot of mm -hmm. conferences um, that, are, that were literally postponed. And so the idea is what do we do with not having anything to look forward to? A lot of us have hit a place of boredom. Boredom usually does not breed creativity. So what could breed creativity, which actually is what I would call um, the way to deflect or the way to almost distract yourself from the negativity would be to get into what exactly it was that drew you to art in the first place. So sometimes in these moments, we have to dig deep into the things that actually mattered when we were 12 and 14 and 15 before kind of we became a little more warped or even jaded um, in terms of in our society, especially these days. Mm -hmm. It's funny you say that, Tasha. I was, God, I was just talking to a friend of mine the other day who works for DCF they thought they were going to have a beautiful life because they were working from home for quarantine, working from home for Corona. Man, they say their phone ain't stopped ringing. Somebody done hit their wife. Somebody done hit their husband. Somebody done hit their kid because they all snapping in quarantine in that small space. I couldn't fathom being in quarantine in an apartment. Mm. Four or five people in a two-bedroom, one bath. Somebody going to snap. Thank God for home ownership. Yeah, I got a porch and a garage, so I can go breathe. I can get away for a little right. while, read a book. Abuse and domestic violence has definitely been on the rise lately. Oh, it's on the rise. My, there my are person, all three things yeah. right now. Irritable, frustrated, and annoyed, right? Mm -hmm. And so how do we find ways to cope with irritability, frustration, and it just this annoyance? And sometimes it is through the very thing that we have always been drawn to, 
um, that makes us happy. And that is the art, which is literally the, the folks that are calling, that, that are listening um, right now. Um, it, it really is a matter of kind of finding a way to distract yourself in a healthy way. Um, yep. Lee, did that answer your question? I know we kind of went around a little bit. Um, Can you talk a little bit about ha making things habit? Ask that one more time. You broke up one time. I heard about making things habit. How do you how do you um, make you know if you repeat bad habits? How Ooh. do you shift it so that you can repeat and make good habits? That's scary. Any, any thought no. about it is scary. That's why we're you here. That's why we're here. To show That's, up it. and continually do it. This is why we're here today. Because see, I was just thinking. I told someone the other day. I read before I got here that. The liquor store sales are up 25% over quarantine. So yeah. somebody is is juicing a lot more than usual to cope with quarantine. Instead of talking to us, they're going to the bottom or, or whatever their vice is. And I'm sitting there saying, I thought we were, I thought everybody was broke. Well, obviously the liquor store is an essential place, Lee, and and they're coping that way, which is not. Shame on them. We're artists here. We, we, we want them to cope with the arts when everybody is, isn't as artistic as us and as strong as us. They're going to the liquor store asking for a gallon or something. Well, so you Dr. Know Pasha, how do you how do you make how do you make something like in Lee's point, how do you how do how do we make something go from a negative essential, like what Chris was saying, like the, the alcohol, to a positive essential? So something that we can repeat over and over again that aids our mental health rather than hurts our mental health. You know, it's interesting that the first thing that comes to mind, Lee, is that we have to, doing something different means doing something different um, and almost getting fed up with ourselves when we go the ulterior route to the place that we're actually not proud of. Um, so to do the new habit, we all heard the 21 days um, to you know, form a new habit or three months actually to make it a lifestyle. And so each day, um, let's see, let's let's pick something actually that would be small. Well, actually, you tell me, Lee, what's something that you know that you've wanted to do that um, you would like it to become a habit? I think um, more honest expression, you know, feeling comfortable and being vulnerable. Oh. Charlie, you need that couch, girl. We gotta get you. Down to no, this Don't is a time for a time We got to get Lee down. To the, no, couch. Geez, all the couch. This else. is the side by therapy couch. This is perfect. The idea is number one. Let's first acknowledge that vulnerability. What do we think of when we think of vulnerability? Do we think of it as a weakness, or do we think of it as a strength? And if you ask me, because I think it is the one of the sexiest traits we can have in life is to be vulnerable and to be vulnerably strong, right? Well, there you go, Tasha, with that girl stuff. That's coming from a lady. Keep going. <laughs> this is when the show gets interesting. Keep going, Tasha. The idea, the idea is, um, it is true. To actually express yourself and have true emotion would be to first acknowledge it within yourself, right? And almost to not say, when everybody says, how you doing? And you say, what would we always say? Oh, we're fine. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, everybody's fine. What happens when you say, how are you doing? And you actually say, um, you know, today I'm maintaining. You know, you may not have to say exactly what is going on in your marriage in the moment specifically, but you can actually say, you know, today was kind of a rough morning, but you know, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking up right now. But the idea is to give yourself permission first to not be fine. And just specifically that to be to be able to express more emotions, it would be to first acknowledge them inside and to know whoever you're talking to, it's kind of safe to be able to share. So then we have to make sure that we, our friendships are secure, right? And even feel confidential for us to be able to practice this very thing, which be would be to vocalize what's really going on with us. That and was beautiful, Tasha. You fine. That was beautiful book talk, Tasha. That was gorgeous. That was absolutely beautiful. You want reality, Lee? Yes. Oh, from a 48 year old man that, that's been there done that no all the, okay all that cute vulnerability that she's talking about if you're vulnerable too many times and you get run over too many times that leads to the couch that leads to depression so now every relationship that you get into you automatically have your gloves up because you're being that cute vulnerable self and you're wondering if i'm vulnerable to this guy 
is he going to do me like the last dude did me and the one before that and the one before that? And it just starts weighing, starts weighing. And then all of a sudden, I don't need no man but Jesus and I'm going to church forever. Okay, Ed, how do we mute Chris's uh, video? That is mm. definitely how it goes. <laughs> We don't even know if Lee likes men or women. Okay. I didn't say that. I said relationships. I've been with you long enough. I know what the deal is. I said relationships. Thank so you. So, Dr. Dr. Tasha, I would love you to unpack that. But but I do want to ask our uh, our producer, Jen, if we have questions from Facebook. And for Lee, I want to say thank you for being here with yeah. your question. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And thanks for breaking the ice. I want everybody to participate and write in. Lee, we're going to hope, hopefully you're going to stick around. We're going to uh, um, put you as an attendee. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer, what do you have coming in from Facebook? Hi. So from Facebook, uh, I have a question. How does an artist with a resume that only supports arts and entertainment get a job that is more essential in these times? Ooh. And I've heard that from my friends, too, where everything stopped from the, for them. They had plans, and this is their skill set, and they don't know what to do. Wow. I'm a dreamer. I'm a, I'm a comedian, but I am married to one that goes to work regular, so I can dream a little more. Um, wow. I, I, Tasha, that's a tough one. Um, because if art is your main revenue or mainstream, I've seen a lot of guys like myself. I've had to be creative and go to the Zoom world. Didn't like it. Mainly me as a comedian, I like to hear laughter, hear feedback. But I mean, my DJ buddies and my music buddies went straight to the cyber arts. <laughs> I started calling them the cyber arts. Everybody went straight to a Zoom party. And... Go fund me and send me some cash. And I found out that a lot of people will, will help out a, a little more than I thought. There are a lot of people doing a little better than I thought they were. Um, some people are st were still getting paid every two weeks from their job. Uh, everybody I knew was not broke, per se. Um, so doing the what we're doing right now, um, a couple of those could help, but I can understand uh, if that's your main source and your main thing, I can see an artist losing it right about now. If they didn't have any stability in their life, you know, I, I can see somebody losing it. Right, and well, we don't you know, want you to lose your mind. That's the no. whole thing, right? I appreciate those who um, wrote in the question um, and, and those that, like, this resonates with them because this is a big deal. The mm -hmm. idea of, it is true what Chris said, is that transitioning to the virtual world is a big deal, right? Yeah. And it's kind of... um. You have to adjust and it may not feel good. Um, but the idea is that people will pay. I've seen yeah. the cash apps go up and the, the Venmos and all of that. So that's one creative way to still be able to show your art to the world, but it's not the exact tour date, as you were saying, um, yeah. Jen, because we can't send anybody to South Africa, you know what I mean, with whatever that tour was, whatever the amount of money or the contract actually was worth. Um, sometimes you can't get that from your living room. But yeah. I would say there is something that I have told someone and this is probably one of the hardest things I've had to do in my adult life and it was to let go of my pride now let me tell you why I'm saying this when it comes to creativity being creative and saying what trade is it that I used to do that I haven't done since I was in my 20s or I haven't done since maybe I was in trade school or I haven't done possibly in 10 years since I finally worked my way up in terms of musically or artistically. So something for me would be to actually, honestly, would be to let go of your pride possibly and do something that you actually didn't think you would ever be doing now. And that would, I've told people anytime, if I at any point was um, fired or couldn't work as a psychologist, I would probably work at Outback Steakhouse. Now that the restaurants are open and I would mm -hmm. ask, do you want ketchup with your fries, right? And I would ask you if you want your blooming onion right now or after, you know, after the meal. And the, the whole point is I would have to let go of the idea of I know how great I am, right, as the psychologist or how much money I used to make. But at some point I need bills paid, right? And I might have to go back to what's where I started, kind of get creative. Even um, I've seen people that have a landscaping business um, because they are good at that. I've seen people that actually have had 
oh, we have someone that says businesses are looking for artists in all genres to add to the reopening of their business. Thank you for saying that. I lived, That was my next thing. I work at a um, drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. And a lot of folks, this is by far, that industry is still going on. And they look, they're look they looking for art therapists or folks that can come in and teach how to do what it is that you're doing. And there are music. And I'm not saying because you're credentialed and you went to got your master's. I'm saying that you're really good at teaching how to play the guitar or to play the drums um, to help them with their anxiety and depression. So I would actually also look to businesses that are looking for you as well as find the trade that you maybe used to do that, that you thought that you never would do. Cause it's only, mm -hmm. which is my hope. Dr. Tasha, you know, we, this is the 40 something show of Art Serve Live. And we've, you know, since April 2nd, we've been broadcasting as a team because we've had to pivot from having art mm -hmm. gallery exhibitions mm -hmm. and having people who come to us. And here we are right now coming to the world with our product. And, but what we do know is this, out of all the artists that we've interviewed in all the moments where we've had music or theater or you name it, right here on Zoom, there, Sophie and I, have both experienced artists who said, I can't do it. I'm too depressed. I can't even come on your show. Ooh. I've lost my business. I've lost tour dates. I was supposed to go on tour, do my music. Um, I've lost artistic opportunities. And I can't even imagine putting myself in public. Um, Sophia, I'd like you to, to express what you've heard from the artistic community as well. Uh, what have you been hearing from people in the arts? Hey, hi, thank you. Yes, um, uh, I I talk to artists every single day of my life. That's the nature of my job, and that's how it is. Um, I've seen both extremes. Um, the artists that are super motivated uh, during this time who are producing work, um, I see them experimenting, exploring, and basically this is the best thing that ever happened to them. And I've seen the other half, and this is the other half that is a bit scary because um, these artists are people that I know, uh, that I work with. Um, and when you hear their anxiety, uh, their loneliness, um, and desperation in their voices, um, it's alarming. Mm -hmm. uh, something that I hear often is, I lost, I lost my identity. I, mm -hmm. I, I, um, a lot of, uh, I haven't get out of bed in days or I haven't been able to eat or, uh, the worst, um, I have nothing to give or I have nothing to offer. Mm -hmm. wow. Um, so these are these artists are, are, are just not inspired to create or to be creative because they have, they, they are now in this limbo state of mind, or I prefer to call it like a state of introspection and uh, I, I, I can even relate to that because I'm also living this process. Um, and even at a personal level, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty and also um, lots of pressure to continue with, you know, in my case, my practice as a curator, but first I have to redefine what is what my practice is and what does that even mean? Like, what is an exhibition now? <laughs> So basically, um, and especially, like, what what are the topics that I want to bring to the table? What are the conversations that I want to um, have with the community? And uh, I, you know, I, 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 I'm grateful. I feel grateful that I'm safe. I'm healthy. My family is well. Um, I have an amazing platform that is Arthur. But the question is, how do we best utilize our platforms and resources to move forward, to elevate, to grow? from this, um, but that is just my personal battle. Um, but I do agree with Ed. Um, sometimes the, the, the feedback from the artists is, it's alarming. Uh, um, thank you, Sophie. This was, um, that was heavy, but I know that that is exactly what is going on right now. And so my first thought, and I love that you said I'm grateful and all of that, um, which was my first thought was the, about gratitude. Um, that you almost have to on purpose and intentionally find different things each day to be grateful for because it's so easy to look at what you're lacking. 
So even you saying it out loud to yourself is huge. Um, and even saying it to someone while they're complaining to say, you know what, what I've learned to do is, um, or I wish, um, oh, thank you so much for the vulnerability, Sophie. Yes. And so the truth is, because that that actually is that transparency is what we need from each other to say, oh, wow, I'm not by myself, which is the whole point, which I appreciate why Art Serb is doing this, is yes. because we don't have to suffer this feeling by ourselves or isolated on an island. And so already us just being here right now, it's like, wow, there's power in numbers to know that I'm not by myself. So yes. the gratitude. Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I had something because it's it's so funny because uh, me being the, I guess the uncle, that's my shirt, uncle, they, they, they call me mm -hmm. uncle, the kids love me. The younger comic always confiding. And it's funny, Sophia was saying this because I'm, my brain is saying a lot of my art friends, since we're going with depression and we're talking about it, let's just go there. That artists are heart people a passionate art person, I don't care if they're a comedian, a poet, or art, music, it comes from the heart and then it starts. So we lay our hearts out there just naturally. And instead of sitting on the couch, Dr. Tasha, we go to the stage, mm -hmm. or we go to the open mic, or we go paint. So that's a lot of these guys' therapy. I know these, I know a lot of comedians, the open mic night is their therapy. Mm -hmm. They get up, they talk about themselves, they make fun of themselves and their problems. Everybody laughs. We sing Kumbaya, have a beer and go home. But you've gotten it off your chest. So now for three months, like some people say, we, yeah, we got articles, uh, we got people that haven't done nothing. In three weeks, I mean three months, they can't get out the house to get that energy. And a lot of them, like I said, they can't get the energy from their couch. You know, you can't get uh, the energy from a Zoom party because, oh, I'm Zooming. Uh, nobody's laughing. My lights bill is due. Uh, God, my mortgage is due. I can't really be funny at this time. It's kind of hard. Not me. I'm just a happy guy. I I'm doing pretty good. Like some that, I'm okay. But for the masses, a lot of people are losing their artistic value. That they're losing their fire to be artistic. But I love, I love that you said that, Chris, um, because we're now talking about how we have always defined how we got to our happiness, right? So we have to almost change the way. Even when Sophie mm -hmm. said, I've lost my identity, right? That's heavy. Like, who am I? And we're questioning ourselves because we're not able to perform or no one is able actually to see what it is that we're doing. So this place of like having to change your identity, maybe... I'm saying to dig deep into the core of who you are. I mean, the root, the rawness of who you are and to actually change what you used to think. Who would ever think what you were was like maybe even the, not even as as deep as you actually are. I wonder if you could become more effective in staying in the place of like this raw emotion and actually not to do away with it, but to actually kind of like embrace it. Let me tell you why I say that. There are a lot of folks right now that are realizing that, wow, I, I didn't realize that I was always thinking I was great because I got all of this validation. Who would have thought, right? So I always loved when I went into the museum and everyone said they liked my art or when I showed showed up, like you said, at the concert and everyone clapped. So what happens when the validation is gone? Man, I now have to look at that and say, is that what I always defined as when I, I'm only great when I'm someone else kind of co-signs it? Now we have to change that. So listen to that. Like it's 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 uh, kind of going to rock you, but it doesn't have to hit your rock bottom. Did you guys hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This can rock you, but this doesn't have to put you into the place of being rock bottom. This can actually find a new way to draw from, I mean, this rawness. It's possible to say like, oh my gosh, I've never thought this way. I've never written this way for the poets. I've never um, been this reactive, right? with the kind of the climate even now in the world, it's like, there's this level of rage. It's like, how do I focus it, right? So that I, that is actually placed exactly where it should be. And that may be on the canvas, that may be on the stage, but how do I prepare for that? That would be now. Um, I would actually say to embrace it um, and not to just forever just say, oh, no, 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 no. Um, the last thing I wanted to say before um, we go to the next question was about suicidal thoughts. Right, because if we're actually feeling all these things by ourselves, mm, we are definitely wondering, well, what's the point of even being here? Yep. Um,
some people judge folks that have suicidal thoughts and say, how selfish could you be to do that? Well, no, anyone that is having thoughts of suicide is because you're saying to yourself, there's so many different ways on the spectrum of suicidality or suicidal um, ideation. But sometimes it's like, you know what, this pain feels so bad that I don't wanna feel this way anymore, right? Or this pain feels so bad or like, I don't even, I almost feel forgotten, right? That's a real feeling to feel forgotten. And like, will anyone even miss me, right? Um, mm -hmm. The truth is that you don't know on the other side of it is like this place of someone that maybe can walk in their purpose, right? And if your purpose has always been through the arts, then we're gonna keep pushing through the purpose and we're almost gonna be more intentional. You know, when sometimes you get tired when running, Lord knows I can do a good mile, but once we get to that second mile, I am breathing like, okay, how many minutes did we say we're gonna be on this treadmill? Okay, however, the beauty is that place of that endurance, right? That you almost hit that place of mind over body or mind over matter or whatever way that you tell yourself. And then you're gonna psychologically almost tell yourself, wow, I'm gonna finish this, right? And I'm going to win I'm going to finish whatever it is that this project was. Um, this is only temporary and kind of okay. going to a place of endurance, just like a runner. That's beautiful. But but here we go back to mentality. Think about when the quarantine first started. I don't know what your neighborhood looked like, but they were just walking away. Everybody was walking. Oh, I'm exercising. I'm riding my bike. I'm getting focused. I'm going to be in the house. I'm going to get fine. Yeah, two get weeks fine. later, it didn't take two weeks. No more walking. That quick. Change directions that quick. Now, me you know, and the that, artist, me and the that's, artist, that's I, about. I, in, I said, I've been writing and writing and writing and writing because when I come back, I'm coming back like a wild man because I've been writing and writing and writing and writing. But I also know a bunch of comics not coming back after this because they weren't passionate about the art anyway, Sophia. They were just up there wasting time using the stage or the art for therapy instead of going to Dr. Tasha, it was cheaper. So they were going to, so we're going to find out who the true artists are at the quarantine. Because if you were passionate about what you're doing, you should come out of here like gangbusters, ready to just lose it. Whatever I think that's about having a routine, right? And having mm -hmm. like, you have a routine, like you're saying, you're utilizing your time mm -hmm. in a way where you feel like when this is over, you could hit the stage. Yeah. And what I feel like um, that there's such a universal quality to what we're talking about, whether it's comedy oh, or art. We have comments coming in on Facebook and Zoom that are talking, you know, people are, are right now talking about how if they've lost their identity, maybe they don't have the tools to compartmentalize the way you have. You, you, you are strong, but not everybody is as strong as you are. I wonder if there's a way uh, we can uh, bring in our next questioner who actually had an experience having this very discussion in Dallas. And I wanna uh, bring in uh, Michelle Rose Dome, who's had this conversation um, with another group of artistic professionals. And I think this idea of, of people finding the tools and finding their strength is actually key to whether they can come out of this uh, successful and I want to ask if Michelle is here, has she joined us? Uh oh, Texas. Uh oh. <laughs> we are we are looking for Michelle Rose Dome. Texas. Uh okay, so we're gonna have to I, I have think to... I found her. Oh, oh, you <laughs> found her. I may have lost. found her. She was lost in cyberspace, but yes, we do need her video turned on. I don't know if she has a bad connection. Michelle? Hello? Hello? Yep. Yeah. I can hear you. I yeah. can't see you. Yeah, we hear you, Michelle. Hello, hello. We hear you, Michelle. Let's welcome. see if I need to. Hi, welcome. Um, did you need me to turn on a video or something? Yeah, we'd love to see you if you like. OK, I don't know if I have control on that. So let's see. It's letting me. Thank you guys for your patience. Uh, it doesn't allow me to turn on a video. Uh, if one of our producers could help her out with that, that'd be fantastic. Okay, you should be able to. 
Well, you know what? If it's uh, not working, we can take your, your call audio. Yeah, we hear you. It says she's rejoining. Ah, I see. So like I was saying, while she rejoins, like I was saying, there's a universa universality to this where I feel like, um, and, and perhaps Dr. Tasha, this is for you. What about mental toolkits that people can develop where they feel if somebody out there feels like they're worthless or that they've lost their identity because they cannot produce the way they were producing in the past, what routines or toolkits can we offer them so that they can feel empowered and to feel like they can come out of this whole or on the pathway to wholeness? Uh, good question. So there's so many different things here. Um, my first thought would be affirmations, right? Um, almost to, to tell yourself something that you wish to believe when. Um, I don't like the whole fake it till you make it, but it sometimes can work when you actually try to tell yourself the things that you wish that you could think for yourself. Um, so I would encourage a lot of people to try to replace the thought. So I'm not a really um, very cheesy therapist, right? Of just like, just tell yourself everything's going to be fine. No, I'm saying the negativity comes up and I want you to replace it with something that you hope one day you'll be able to believe. And then eventually you'll go from this negative self-talk that's like 30%. Or, or 70% and maybe it'll go to 30% and then maybe to 10% and eventually it will get to play a place of non-existence. But you actually have to identify that negative thought and see where is it coming from? How true is it, right? Because a lot of times we have a reality that can almost become a delusion and it's like a thin line, right? And that would be a place of anxiety. What we all do in terms of fear, the fear of the unknown, the fear of the future, and we start to catastrophize, right? It's kind of like the Tasmanian devil, right? You guys remember that? Or the Sonic the Hedgehog. You, remember, you guys remember that with the videos um, or video games back in the 80s? And yep. the idea that it was going so fast. And this is what happens when we do, when we catastrophize. And it's like, oh my God, I lost my job. If I lose my job, I'm gonna lose my home. If I lose my home, where are we gonna live? If we're, gonna, if we're not gonna live there, then we'll never, we won't be able to see our my mother. And if I don't see my mother, then what happens if she dies without me? What? Hold on. We haven't even lost the job yet. Or we have lost the job, but we are going to find creative ways to get another one. And so I'm just saying to slow down that Tasmanian devil, which is the catastrophizing, and find it to be one thought at a time. This is very hard when you're anxious, right? This is affecting your sleep. This is affecting the way you eat. Yeah. Um, there was something that um, Sophie said that I, I, I meant to... Um, respond to and getting out of the bed huge okay uh, turning on a light huge or opening up the blinds huge very small but huge i'm saying sometimes you have to get out of the bed or sit up in the bed right because sometimes we're laying down and we're wondering wow why are we still sad or why do we still feel helpless and it's kind of like you almost have to sit yourself up or get out of the bed and guess what make the bed you guys are hearing me there is something in making your bed in the morning. Not only power. out of it, but you're actually getting to a place of saying, I am going to do what? The very first task of the day. And I'm going to pr be productive in this moment. And I'm going to do all the creases. I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to go all the way military boot camp style. But at some point, when you put the pillows on there, then what are you going to do? You're going to get into the shower, right? Because yeah. sometimes there's something that really happens when we are wearing the same sweatpants hello, that we had on since Monday and it's now Saturday. I understand that they're comfortable, but you are getting almost too comfortable in being depressed. That's how deep it is. So getting into the shower and um, getting dressed, hello, with maybe the real pants or the, the real shirt, right? Or whatever it is that you actually used to do when you felt productive. And so you're almost making yourself feel the things that you actually used to feel organically because it was a regular day. And so this level of routine and scheduling and being intentional is how we can get to this place of not staying in depression. Do you hear me? I'm acknowledging the depressed thoughts, right? I'm acknowledging the anxiety. No one is saying, what is so wrong with me? Everybody else seems to be fine. No one's effing fine. Did you hear me say that? No one is just fine from March 20. 2020 to like right now, June 2020. No one's just fine all day, every day. Everything is uncertain and we're questioning and we're doubting everything. We're insecure, right? All these ugly feelings are happening that, um, this isn't me. Um, why am I crying? Or why am I 
having this lack of self-control with my tongue and I'm me and my spouse aren't doing well. And all these things end up doing what? They translate to the next thing if we don't take care of the first thought, which was the negativity so that we don't get to a place of catastrophe um, when it's not even there yet. Even though it feels like it, there is something to be grateful for. I've told somebody and I'll be done in like 30 seconds. Right now, folks are tired of their children. And I literally say, you know what? There are people that wish they had kids that got on their nerves, right? Infertility is real. There are people that are tired of their spouses and there are people that wish they had a partner to get on their nerves. There are people that say to themselves, man, um, I wish that I, I had a job right now. And then someone can say, wow, I wish I had a gift like you. And this is so crazy, but you're, you're thinking and you're focused valid, justifiable, you're focused on what you don't have, but you'd be surprised at the things that you have, people wished they had your problems. And Tosh, that's wow. beautifully said, Tosh. I don't have to say anything after that, Tasha, you did it. Oh, okay, well, we need to drop the mic, we're dropping the mic on that? Okay. Drop on that part, I'll drop the mic on that. You did, okay. I don't have to say a word. But she was well, we, telling the truth though about the shower and making the bed, that, that that's very important because like I said, I knew I had a Zoom party today. I raced to the barber shop because I wanted to be in character. I took a, a shower. I cleaned up. I was so disappointed when I said I had to get out of this barber chair because I'm going to be late to this meeting today. But I'll be clean tomorrow for our show, Tasha. Okay, got it. But, but, Go ahead, but that's part of what you were saying. I, I was like, "Woo! The routine. I'm getting out of the house. Yes, I'm about to do a show. Woo! I'm going to clean up and." <laughs> You Dang know it. what? Ed always laughs at me, but I always put perfume before the Zoom. I got my cologne on, babe, Sophia. I haven't put cologne on in weeks. I smell great. I'm with you. Sophie, I'm so glad because, you know, the, 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 the scent comes through the, the screen so nicely. I think uh, you we, smell great, Sophie. You smell great. Yeah. We did fix our technical problems, and we do have Michelle Rose Dome here, a uh, professional Hi. actress. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Hi. Hi there. Hi, Ed, Chris, Dr. Tasha panel. Thank you so much for doing this. This is fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I, I, I want to say this is truly uh, something we can all be grateful for, this discussion, starting it, and that it can be encouraging for others. I've shared it on my Facebook because we did an event similar in Dallas with women in film. And essentially, um, our panel had the following to say. Um, the response was that it's important for us to practice meditation daily so that it becomes muscle memory. You know, there may be moments where we feel more, uh, more emotion than not. And in order to get to that point where it's, you know, keeping ourselves calm, just this very idea of practicing it on the daily will help with that muscle memory. They also suggested some apps like Calm and, and really just being immersive with our emotions, just taking, for example, the idea of washing your hand, feeling the soap, seeing the lather, in, intoxicating scent, taking it in, that this is a way to help keep yourself present and in the moment. So my question to you, to you, the South Florida panel is, how are you guys handling? What, are, what is your response? Oh my goodness. This is, this, the, you have, I gotta say this because I, as a comedian, I profile everybody. You have the cat face, you, you got cats. <laughs> You have a cat, don't you? I, know I do not mean. have a cat. I have a dog. A dog? I was going there next. You got the cat face. You have, you have the welcoming dog park, let's just be happy face. And I love it. But but to, to answer your question, um, when, I, when I used to teach kindergarten in first grade, we taught yoga to little kids. A lady had a yoga program. It was the cutest thing. And I was like, wow, if we could teach young neighborhood kids at five, six years old how to calm their nerves, what a great world this would be. And I used to have little babies, if they get, ex and they knew at an early age because this was a weekly program. This lady came in every week. And those little babies knew at an early age with all those problems they had from home that if I just calm down for one second, I used to see little kids close their eyes and take deep breaths before they 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 did action. And that's when and that was maybe 15, 15 years ago now. And I'm saying to myself, if those type things can be taught early, 
Because a lot of times, Doc, we try and figure things out when we're 30 and 25. The earlier we find out, I help. I think at age seven, we should be teaching kids what liability and assets are. They need to know that early. The earlier we, I shouldn't be knowing about credit at 25. Teach me at seven when I'm really trying to learn everything. Even with yoga, teach me early. So now as they get older, it's a part of the fabric of their life. It's part of everything they do. We don't have to have these conversations because kids already know. We're trying to correct broken adults who got years and years of trauma. And it's kind of difficult sometimes. And that's where all that extra stuff comes in, the medication and the liquor and the anxiety and the cigarettes and the dope and all this other stuff because they didn't address it as a child. That's my, I'm sorry, that's my elementary education degree coming out of me. I just think little children should know these type things early. But answer her question, Tasha, I'm sorry. Miss um, Michelle, uh, one thing that I, there are a few things that I've learned to do in this time. Um, and one of the biggest things is to first be kind to myself. Okay. And I want you to hear me say it like, like I don't even use the word kind much, but <laughs> when I say it, it feels so pleasant, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like, wow, let's find ways to be kind to ourselves. Almost um, to where we're not always so self-critical and always thinking about what is wrong, right? even as artists, even though we can be as free spirited and all of that, but we're also our biggest critics, right? So we, we have this critical voice that does not go away. So even being kind to yourself may be something different that you haven't done in a long time and you deserve it. Another thing I've done is something that you said about the meditation is about being more mindful, right? Mindfulness is huge. So we're talking about eating slower, right? Putting the fork down and finishing your meal or finishing that one bite. Um, they do it in Europe all the time, right? That's almost, it's almost like an event. A meal is an event to actually slow it down. Um, whatever drink, right? Your wine or your lemonade, and then you put it down and then you speak to the person, possibly if you have someone else in your home and trying to do almost changing the culture of your home and being more mindful even while you're eating or while you're, cook, while you're cooking. Um, even um, there's something that I've learned is about self-acceptance which goes into being kind to myself, is just not picking yourself apart, trying it on purpose. With what Lee said earlier, and I love it, if we could get to a place where self-acceptance is our norm, oh my God, could you imagine, right? That level of um, kind of accepting self may help you with even relationally um, to where other people can accept you because you accept you, you accept yourself. Another thing I would wanted to say was about becoming a minimalist. So, that means to me is be, a, being able to find contentment or finding ways to be satisfied with things that normally wouldn't have been enough, but actually like taking it down a little bit and finding ways. And I'm not telling everybody to get a tiny house like on HGTV, right? I'm saying literally like, you're like, oh, like let's just say if you have your, your honey beside you and you always, maybe you are, have not been as active, we'll say horizontally in the bedroom. But instead of thinking about what you're not doing, you may go back to when we were dating, right? And it actually was something emotional or you had little butterflies when you held hands, right? Or you <laughs> right? And I'm not, and it's a really big deal when we actually get to a place. I'm, I'm really serious about becoming this minimalist and actually minimizing what it takes to make you satisfied. And then lastly um, would be serenity. Um, letting go of control, are you kidding me? I know I used to be the biggest control freak, right? I mean, I guess I had my little control F badge, right? But I had to take it off because who is it helping, right? It's actually hurting me to think I can control all things. So obviously the serenity prayer at the beginning of accepting the things I cannot change. And we all need to be saying this almost every morning, almost as a ritual, as we wake up as well as we go to bed, um, just to almost be able to sleep. Tasha, I, I'm about to jump out my seat here. I'm sorry, because... Oh. I had a theme, I had a theme I was gonna tell people that there is no in between with the quarantine. Uh -huh. Regard whatever facet of life, you either way better or way worse. Okay. Cause you're talking about not busy horizontally or whatever with your mate. Well, guess what? You're either busier than ever, or they're waiting on divorce papers when this is over. People have been looking at folks for too long, for three months. They either love each other more than ever. Oh, it's like, oh my God, I should have left right before this thing happened. But People are looking at their children. They're looking at their kids. What did we do? 
to conceive this guy. What were we doing that night? Or somebody's looking at their baby like, oh, I love this guy. He is just what I thought he was. There's a lot of evaluating going on already, Tasha. We're just not admitting it right now. But people are looking at every facet of their life because they got so much time to do it. We've gone all the way back 25 years in my brain like, what did I should have majored in something else at age 21? I'm 48 now. You done thought about everything over these three months. This is crazy. Self evaluation is crazy right now. You're right. There is a lot of um, evaluation, but we need to make sure whatever the answer is to the questions that we're now asking ourselves, those difficult mm-hmm. questions, is that, that you can still find ways to be kind to yourself and forgive yourself. Oh not be hard on yourself because if you are every artist right now that is listening every musician every comedian every poet right if you are you're not any good to you right which means you may not be any good to the art for those that actually need you could you imagine that we need you to actually stand up and intentionally focus through and find this level of endurance just like when we're running a marathon to get to the end we need you Right. I want you to hear me say that we need you to push through as hard as it is, but we need you to push through. And um, I don't even want to know the level of creativity and the depth of what you're going to bring the world once you get to the other side. Dr. Tasha, I have a question for you. Because okay. I, I have friends. Did like, ask Michelle, did you ahead. answer your question, Michelle, or did you? You did. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so well, much. Well, hold on. I do want to say thank you, Michelle, for being here. And uh, your question was awesome. And we really want you to uh, find more success in Dallas, Texas. And if you end up doing anything like this, continuing on in Dallas, let us know because we want to know what the arts community is, uh, what's going on in the arts community everywhere. Yes, yes absolutely. We'll do. Thank I'm you. I'm coming out there to tell jokes soon. I'll be in Texas. I'll let you know. Bring it on. Yay. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks a lot, Michelle. Thank you. Okay, Tasha, I was thinking. I got a lot of friends in authority positions that people look, that that people confide in. Let's Mm -hmm. say therapists per se, uh, pastors per se. I got preacher friends. I got a lot of people that folks confide in. Are those people depressed right now because they can't help the people that they're used to helping? Or are they being creative? What are their creative ways that they're using? to get their message out to still help others, you know, because people can't just walk to the office now and say, hey, Dr. Tasha, let me talk to you. Hey, pastor, I'm not doing too well. Hey, pastor, what can I do for you? Because I got a pastor friend on, I got a couple of those in the um, that are watching, and I'm curious how they're making it. Are they depressed because they can't go every Sunday to talk to their members? They can't go on Wednesday night to talk to their people, and, and Tasha herself can't go and touch people the way she's used to now that's a good question about leadership and that can actually be in any really industry and a facet yeah even for art serve for the administration right it's like none of us are exempt from feeling um these feelings and so my first thought for every leader every healthcare worker um every ceo um i want you to not continue to have this level of a i'm going to call it a god complex right So you may believe in God, you may believe in the universe, you may not believe in either. But sometimes we have this complex that we feel that we have to save the world when truly we have to take maybe one person at a time. And so I want you to take that S off of your chest, literally, and not have to always be um, that super, but actually being you is enough. Um, I want you to give you permission to take off that hat and disconnect from work for those that are working other jobs, right? And because without the buffer, some some of us don't have the commute, right? To go from work to home. Some people do not have um, the idea of like, how do I change from my professional brain to my personal brain? And so they're almost uh, speaking to their family or their friends, almost the way they speak to their employees. Um, And sometimes even that is getting in the way. So for leadership, my first thought would be to let go of the God complex. We cannot save the world. We can do what we can. And then we have to find a way to kind of give ourselves the pass to do something else tomorrow. And then disconnect from work, find the buffer um, between having to serve everyone and making sure that you're still self-care and serving yourself. Because we have to take care of ourselves, even in the midst of being of service. Um, That's for leadership and really anybody. 
Dr. Tasha, I'm glad you said that. And I'm glad you said marathon before because it reminded me of the time. And I wanted to, to expand this conversation at this moment to okay. bring in our therapeutic art specialist, Dr. Uh, I'm not doctor, uh, therapeutic arts specialist, Narissa Bell, and I caught myself there. Uh, sorry about that. And Narissa, I wanna welcome you to the show. And first of all, um, because we know about technology, can you hear us and can we hear you? Yes, I can hear you guys and I can see everyone too. Yeah. By the way, great session so far, guys. Awesome, drive-by therapy. Can't wait to also hear from Chris what my profile is eventually. Oh, <laughs> no. No, no, do it, Chris. Do it now, Chris. Do Let it now. Do that face. Where is she? He can't see, he can't see you. I can't see her yet. Uh, oh, you oh, can't see her. me. There, there oh, oh, this is. Oh no, 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 no. This is this is my happy liberal friend. She's a good liberal girl. <laughs> She knows everyone. I, I, I see it on her face. I, I, I could see you when I was teaching kindergarten, coming in to be an assistant to read to the children occasionally. You're a very good hearted, liberal woman. I see it. Cat owner. Well, thank you for that. Cat. Meow. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not really a cat. No, I'm not a cat. I'm a dog. Dog park. I'm off two times. I'm two dog park ladies. I, I'm, I'm off. Yeah, you don't have that eye. Cat lady has a certain eye. She has a certain stare. <laughs> You don't Nerissa, have that. You do your thing. You do your, do your thing. thing, girl. Do your thing. Nerissa, do me a favor. Can you tell our audience at home? Because we do want to talk about solutions. We do want to talk about pathways to healing. Um, I want you to, for a moment, uh, address what you do with therapeutic arts. And can you tell our audience at home what's the difference between art therapy and therapeutic arts? Sure. Um, so, first, for, for those of you that are listening and, and joined in, um, first, let me just tell you like a little bit about very quick uh, who I am and, and maybe why I'm here um, and why I would talk about therapeutic arts. So it'll, it'll give you some context. Um, so I'm Narissa. I'm an artist. I'm an arts and health practitioner. I'm a two-time cancer survivor, a coach, and a mother. And I help adults and children bounce back from physical and emotional adversity. Um, and, you know, I've received a master's of fine arts in Pratt Institute. I hold numerous certifications in therapeutic arts, neurolinguistics, cognitive behavioral therapy, and rational emotive uh, behavioral therapy. But really what I do is I combine my love and my knowledge of creativity, therapeutic art, coaching, and neuroscience to reduce health issues caused by stress. Um, I really facilitate both virtual, uh, now virtual more than ever, um, and on-site art and wellness workshops for South Florida universities, hospitals, faith-based faith uh, organizations, public school districts, and community centers. So my combination of therapeutic arts and neuro-linguistics coaching really aims to di um, serve diverse ethnic groups, social and economic factors, and is multi-generational. So my passion has transitioned to purpose, and I really enjoy helping um, to enhance a person's well-being through the arts to create a healthier world. And I like to always say that medicine heals the body, but art heals the spirit. Ooh. And to answer Ooh, that, that's, um, that's just a little bit on me. <laughs> um, but to answer uh, Ed's question, uh, which is a great question. Um, first, I would like to just say that people often confuse um, therapeutic arts and art therapy. So I wanna explain um, in short the difference so that it really makes sense. So these two important areas um, of work often lumped together, but are quite different. So therapeutic art focuses on eliminating stress and anxiety through a creative distraction. And it's not concerned with analyzing um, the work or diving into its meaning. So the terms therapeutic arts expressive arts, arts and health, arts and public health. Um, these facilitators and practitioners undergo different types of certification and educational training um, that specialize in specific areas. There's no board of certification or licensure for this um, type of work as of this moment. But art therapy, on the other hand, focuses specifically on mental health and examining how the process and the final artwork 
have meaning and connection in your life. And it requires board certification to be licensed as an art therapist. So they're very different. So think of art therapy in a way of really honing in on the process and the product to be able um, to work through uh, mental health issues. And therapeutic arts is about the process to relieve and reduce stress and anxiety. It is not about diving into those issues. So big difference there. Does that make sense? Or any yes. questions? A about lot. A lot Absolutely. Of I actually want to uh, go to our producers now that you're here and to bring in the voice of our audience, um, Ryan or Jennifer, uh, do you see uh, comments and questions in Zoom or Facebook? And uh, do we have something that we can bring to the panel uh, and bring to Narissa as she's just joined us? I have one. Um, it's a question that comes from Facebook. And it says, how do you get over the feeling like there's no point to even attempt to do anything right now because there's so much turmoil in the, wor in the world? My creativity is tied to my emotions and the news, social media, the world, et cetera, it's just has me drained right now. Narissa, could you go with that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so first let's probably, I think the first thing I hear when, um, uh, when that was Ryan was giving that question out is, um, or I wanna step back to and kind of really actually tie in what we were talking about in the beginning is um, perhaps giving yourself permission to be okay with not creating anything at the moment, which normally I probably in, in therapeutic arts may not go that direction. But if you are in a state of not being able to create, and I'm not sure what um, this person's art is, right? Um, so there are many different forms of art um, where we can be in fine arts, we can be in dance and music and comedy. Um, entertainment, et cetera. But perhaps to take a moment and take a pause. Um, sometimes we often feel as artists, and, and I'm here I am also speaking as an artist as well, is we feel this need to have to continue to create. And sometimes it's within the pause that that next burst or that next gem or that next step for us will be able to um, elicit a direction. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by social media, if you're feeling overwhelmed by the times that we're going through right now, um, perhaps a moment to pause. And I say that is because earlier today, uh, if you were listening to, to the viewer that's out there, Lee Davis was on and she asked specifically about how can patterns be, be broken? And patterns are broken in a sequential order. It's like a formula. And that's by permission first, and, and Dr. Tasha was talking about permission before. The first thing that you have to do is to be able to give your permission, yourself permission, right? So we have to work inward before we can go outward. Um, and part of that in therapeutic art is to do other things. So for instance, if you give yourself permission to break a pattern, you give yourself permission to have awareness or action for something and then reassess it. You go down a sequential smaller chunk it out path of being able to break a pattern. And back to the question at hand, which is what can I do or, or I'm, I'm at a loss and I can't move is do you need to move right now is the question I have for that person. Is it okay for you to pause? Are you afraid to be in that pause? Um, is there something going on with that that you see, hear or feel? And when I say feel, I don't mean emotionally, I mean physically happens to you. Um, that the pause is not going to be relevant or work for you. Um, but the first thing I'd say is, is chunk it down because there was a lot in that question um, going from zero to 100. So if we just move that scale back down to the beginning, the first step is um, do you need to make a change or do you feel you need to make a change in the moment or can you take a breath? And, and what would that mean for you? Um, some things I'll share for people that are having, and because I think solutions are also, um, solutions that are immediate and individual are important. Um, because one thing I heard in this too is this overwhelming feeling, right? Um, and 
there is an overwhelming feeling within thinking patterns uh, can create the ability of, for us to feel stuck or paralyzed in the moment and not able to move forward. So one way to break that, um, there's something called, I don't know if people are familiar here with uh, the fight or flight mentality, right? When you have a physiological reaction that actually occurs in response to something that you perceived as harmful or an attack or a threat to your own personal survival. Mm. And in, in the fight or flight mentality, um, that is what kind of, what's really fascinating about how our bodies work is that that taps into our central nervous system. And our central nervous system really just is, is very glorified, fancy way of saying it's an electrical information highway, right? Uh, within our body. And it's made up of a lot of nerves and those nerves carry messages to us. And so we respond in a physiological way to certain things that we see, hear, and feel and experience. So when you're at that moment, it's very hard to do all the work to go forward, right? To create, to, to do the action, to get the meditation out there, to do all these amazing tools, to have those tools, right? Sometimes it's so hard to just even pick up a tool, right? Or recognize that tool because you, you're not even there, right? We're at different layers. Everybody's at a different level. Um, and so what I say with that is there's certain things that you can do um, in order to, to break that ice, so to speak, in order to just get one step forward, even if it's like a pinky toe, not even the whole foot yet, just it's chunking it down. Anybody interested in hearing some of those little things that you can do in those moments? Happy to share them. <laughs> um, Marissa, Marissa. Yeah. I was listening to the physical and mental, how they work together. I've been getting a lot of messages to go to the snack aisle at the grocery store to get cookies and chips and stuff. You really just put that right, boom. You just went right down my alley. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, the, thank you very much. Now I know what's been going on. I feel the energy coming to my brain saying, boy, <laughs> crunchy munch, popcorn, Oreos, that away. <laughs> and, and, and Narissa, all jokes aside. Did you have I, to say Oreos like that, Oreos? Yeah, I did, Oreos, that way. I felt, I, I felt, you know what? I think I was an art practitioner as a kindergarten, first grade teacher. Oh, watch, watch me now. During rainy season, when I couldn't go to recess, I would put on some soothing music, let all the kids go get construction paper and draw. They were silent. I did not judge. Like Narissa said, I did not judge what they were drawing. I just let them get the energy out and draw. And we would put on soothing music with like little bird sounds chirping in the back and nature, just like your little backdrop right there. It felt like we were out with flowers and chirp, 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 chirp. And they would just draw and nobody said a word for an hour. I could not believe I had little hood kids sitting still, drawing, because they can do it too. And I, I, now that I'm listening to you, I was an art practitioner. Oh God! Oh, spreading, I'm, spreading adding art, that. I'm adding that to my uh, resume. Oh, I have an elementary ed degree, and I taught art. Darn it! Oh God! Sorry. So what about, one actually great. Go ahead. Ed. Oh, I was going to say, what about the other tool, which is like um, recognizing the world around us? We have we have an artist who talked about the, the a word that uh, I think is really important that we have not yet to broach yet and uh, the word gratitude. Um, and if you allow me, I took a clip from her YouTube channel uh, right here, and I wanted to show it to you guys and get your, get your reaction to the sense of gratitude. Thinking about what I'm grateful for completely changes my mindset um, from feeling sorry for myself that I've got to move <laughs> to being grateful for the things that I have around me and I can pretty much just look around and say I'm grateful for that I'm grateful for that you don't have to be big things I'd be grateful for the cup of coffee I'm holding in my hand that day so number one is I change my mindset and think about gratitude instead of feeling sorry for myself the second thing that I do so we actually uh, have Lori Pratico 
with us. And uh, that, that concept of gratitude, that concept of um, uh, noticing the world around you, uh, I wanted her to, to come to you, Narissa, and, and actually address that. Lori's here. And Lori, welcome to, uh, welcome to the show. And we wanted to get you to share your thoughts on this, on this journey of gratitude. Hi, thanks for having me. Can you hear me? Hey, Lori. Hi. Yes, hey, hey Lori. Hey. Um, well, you know, it's uh, listening to Narissa. She has so many great things to say. And um, I don't know Narissa real well. I just met her. And um, one of the things that I noticed that she did when all this started was she started um, doing TikTok videos. And that was something she had never she hadn't done before and her TikTok videos are hilarious and they cheer me up every single day when I watch them. And it's like, you know, it also like introduced to me like, okay, be grateful for this time that I have that I never have because I'm always so busy and try something new, try something that I never really have time to do. Um, you know, and as far as gratitude goes, I, I learned a while ago that um, it's absolutely impossible to be miserable and grateful at the same time. Yeah. They're just two emotions that don't go together. You, you can't do them both. <laughs> so, and you can always choose gratitude. And, and I know it's not easy. I, today was one of those days where I, I just had the hardest time getting motivated, but my motivation came out of necessity it became out of, you know, there are things in my life that are necessary. Food <laughs> is necessary. Um, you know, my mission with, with my Girl Notice project is necessary to me. And when I make those things stand out in the forefront and don't make TV and looking at people's opinions on social media, the necessary things I do in my day, I become more grateful and I realize, okay, you know, I got to move. I have to get up. I have to do what I need to do because it's necessary and, and part of my purpose. So, and purpose gets you moving. So that's my I two. On that so much. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And I, I've always said that ingratitude is free. You know how we, we mm -hmm. think about all the times of all the things we don't have right now, maybe for the lack of income or the money coming in, but truly it's like, it's actually free. I really appreciate that that video appreciate that thank you so much and and i'm on the um on the capitalist side of the world i've always said we can be grateful but i've also learned over this pandemic i was taught as a kid passion makes a profit if you're passionate about something you'll make some money absolutely you show me, you show me a guy that's cutting grass and he's passionate about what he does the rest of the people are going to say who cut your yard i want to cut my yard I'm passionate about telling these jokes. I was passionate about being a teacher when I taught. When I was Coach Chris, I was passionate about coaching kids. Tasha's passionate about what she does. So if we get more passionate about what we're doing, um, I think the gratitude and all those other things that we've been dealing with will fall into place. But we got to find our passion. And most people aren't passionate about what they're doing. If we're honest, we're just going through the motions out of necessity. I might be, you might be doing a job because you got to pay bills, but you're not passionate about what you're doing. So you show me a person that's showing up to a job for 30 years, they're not passionate about, let me show you a miserable person. They're not that happy. They, they, they're not, because it's it's miserable going through life, always questioning, man, I wish I would have did this. Or man, I wish I would have tried this 10 years ago. That stuff weighs on people, Tasha. It weighs on you. So you got to find what you're passionate about early in life. And um, if you're passionate, I think you'll be all right. Narissa, what do you, what do you have to offer for that? Well, I wanted to also just chime in um, back a, a little bit back for a moment into the, into gratitude, right? So, so gratitude, there's a lot of times, um, which is awesome. We can talk about all the amazing things that we can do, but I think it's, it's doing them that becomes the challenge sometimes for us, especially right now uh, oh, for a lot of us that are here uh, on this call. And that is some examples of where gratitude can be used in a creative way. So for instance, um, 
and, and I'm going to say this from a standpoint to sh share a personal story. When we talk about gratitude, gratitude is a practice, right? A practice like anything. So if you play a sport, if you play football, soccer, if you go to the gym, if you like to run, you practice that just like you do with art is also a practice, right? Um, but a lot of times, often, I think people jump into gratitude feeling as if it needs to be something very large and monumental. It needs to have, um, it needs to have like such a gracefulness around it. It doesn't have to be. And I'll share an example with you. When I was um, undergoing cancer treatment, I used to try to go through this gratitude. It took me a while to realize I really wasn't that grateful. I mean, I thought I was grateful, but when I started practicing gratitude, I recognized that it was difficult to truly like embody that, right? To truly have it, to be able to have some change. So when I would be in, um, in uh, the hospital getting treatments, I would have to go through this little dialogue in my head, which was just to come up with a few things that I was grateful for. And um, I document it quick with a photo um, so that I could remember the moment that I said that grateful item. And it would be as small as to say, I'm so grateful for the stale fucking crackers in here. I'm so grateful. I mean, it had negativity around it until I could get to a point that I started really embracing gratitude. Like I'm, I'm grateful for the heat lamp because I'm freezing. It had, it had a context to it, right? And my point is there's a little bit of the bitterness and the negativity in there. But as I kept practicing, that went to the backdrop until it eliminated. And then real gratitude was there where I could be like, I'm just grateful I'm alive today, or I'm grateful I didn't get sick today. So my point for the listeners that are out there or, or hearing this is that gratitude doesn't need to be perfect. And there's creativity in the way that you find it. Um, and you can even express it. If you're a creative person or identify as a creative person, maybe not even an artist, um, one way of doing that instead of journaling, sometimes journaling helps people and people love to write. Um, some people don't like to write. Maybe by putting something down on paper, making it permanent with a pen, or where they feel like the words aren't eloquent, it stops them, right? There's an obstacle in a way. So one way is, is snapping photos, taking pictures of something that you're grateful for and knowing what that is. You're not sharing it with anybody, but almost like you're creating little albums for yourself and it's individualistic. And when, I, when we talk about therapeutic art, also I just wanna say, Oftentimes people don't understand, you don't have to even create art to be involved in therapeutic art. Science shows that by viewing art, by um, reading about art, listening to music, um, being immersed in the arts and there are different types, it doesn't mean you have to create it. And even if you can't pick up a paintbrush, you can't pick up a microphone, uh, you, you feel stunted in some way, then by immersing yourself around others in the arts, um, or just art in general, that in itself has a, has a healing benefit to it until you get to the point that you would want to pick up a paintbrush again or do some graphic design or a microphone or, or what have you. Okay, well, I mean, that was, a, that was an amazing answer and like super deep. Um, Lori, I think that that really answered your question. <laughs> and we're, you know, we're so I'd like to add one other thing. Yeah, go for it. You know, you talked about not sharing your gratitude, that it can be just for you, which it absolutely can be. But it's actually really cool to share it too. I had um, a gratitude buddy that I would text every day, like five things I was grateful for. And if I didn't text them by like 12 o'clock, they were like, why didn't I get your gratitude list yet? You know, they'd be texting me oh, back, like, what are your gratitude today? Gra grateful for today. So it makes you kind of accountable. And, yeah. and, and, you know, and it, like you say, it, it doesn't have to be these grand, amazing things. When you start actually writing down five, even just five things a day, you start realizing that it is the little things that, you know, are so important and that, that we are grateful for and we take for granted, you know? So, um, so, so, you know, you can even have a group of people that kind of text each other and, and become like a little gratitude group and uh, appreciate each other. And, and it's a great way to learn about each other too, because, you know, people would send me stuff and I'm like, I need to know that you had this or that you were into that. And, you know, so it's a cool way to get to know people, figure out what they're grateful for. 
that's amazing. I mean, I think at uh, at the end of this conversation, we're all going to get Chris's phone number, and <laughs> oh, we're all as a group going to send him our gratitude. Absolutely, coll collectively. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am a selfish person. I need all of that. I like. I love attention. I, I love attention. Please we know. bring it. Bring it. Lori, thank you for being on the panel. Thank you for thank your question you. and your thank insights you. on gratitude. And we will um, see you soon. And um, when it comes to guys finding solutions, um, you know, having a gratitude buddy, I think what, what Lori said was fantastic. Having a partner who can help you through a tough time, uh, Narissa and Latasha, uh, Dr. Russell, do you have other solutions that we could offer our audience at home um, uh, to help get them to a place of, of healing? And, and even before you, you answer that, I wanted to ask our producers if they saw questions or comments on that issue itself. The, um, well, and I, maybe... Sorry, I, I did see a question. It may not have been on that specifically. It was for Narissa, and they were interested in your to-do list. Oh, well, there you go. In my, in my like, personal to-do list or I think something you had more? mentioned um, you had a step-by-step -step list that you wanted to share, and then we went off on another topic. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Uh, oh, I had mentioned some solutions. I had mentioned mentioned yeah. some solutions. I know. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Not so much a, a step by step, but, but um, so if you're if you're in a place when at that time point I was talking a little bit about um, when you might be paralyzed or stuck on something or not being able to get out of something, there are a few things that you can do on your own to help you. Um, get out of that. And that is really to calm uh, what's called our somatic nervous system. Um, and that goes back to the central nervous system. So one quick thing that you can do at any time, you can even do this if you have road rage. Um, it, it's about any moment that you want to control um, and take back control of an emotional state that you're in. So first and foremost, these are all about being present, right? Because if you're not present, you... Um, kind of go in that hamster wheel uh, and cycle of emotional thoughts. Um, like Dr. Tasha was talking about earlier, when we go from maybe losing a job to not being there when our mothers die, uh, it, it, you're like, wow, how did I go from zero to 150, right? So starting at zero, um, one way would be to name five facts about yourself, very specific facts with no emotion around them. One is your name. The second is... Um, where you live. The third is whom you live with, your age, and where you are in that moment. Doesn't necessarily need to be in that order, but those are the five. So for instance, I can say to you, I am Narissa Balland. I'm 42 years old. I live in Aventura, Florida. I live with my husband, my two kids, and my dog. And I am sitting at my dining room table on the Zoom call. And I could repeat that to myself maybe three or I might need it 19 times, depending on what type of emotion or where I'm at. Um, if I'm filled with rage, if I'm filled with something that I can't seem to calm my body down physiologically, repeating the sequence of that, there is the, in the repetition itself and in the factual non-emotional nature, it helps you to become more present. And no one needs to know you're doing it. That's the joy of it. You can say it out loud or you can say it in your, in your head. It really does work. It's an amazing practice and it, and it helps to ground you in where you are right in that moment, who you are and where you physically are, um, just to get you to a point of a sense of calm. Breathing, we all hear about breathing is so amazing, right? Yoga and breathing, taking deep breaths, meditation, deep and controlled breath also functions as a way to help uh, the central nervous system calm down. Um, even from a great example of that is anybody here that's had childbirth, they teach you how to breathe, which sounds funny, but they teach you how to breathe because you're about to go through something that's extremely painful, uh, whether you have drugs or not. <laughs> um, so breath helps control that. It's that mind body connection there. And then pattern drawing. 
something as simple as just drawing patterns and patterns like you, you probably, some people here may or may not have heard of mandalas or uh, Zen tangles, adult coloring. Those things are all great. They do, they provide a level of um, therapeutic art in terms of um, being able to get into a repetition, get into a groove where you can calm the physiological state in your body. But just let's say you don't want to draw a mandala. Let's say you can't, uh, you're, you're sitting on a Zoom meeting that you don't really want to be a part of, or you've zoned out, or you're thinking about something. Literally drawing circles in a, in a pattern formation any way you want. They, it doesn't have to be super artistic or creative. It could just be in columns and rows. But for, studies show that if you can do that for seven minutes, it will literally bring you down to a place where you can become more present. Um, so, so those were some kind of immediate and individual things I was, I was mentioning earlier. Um, but what I wanted to say to everybody on here who identifies with being creative or enjoys being creative in some way that practicing with materials and intention makes it feel more possible to make an actual change within yourself. We're all creative in different ways. Each one of us has the ability to imagine, ask questions, play and wrestle with the raw materials of our lives to bring new insights into the world. And so if you want to change the way you feel, you have to change the way you think. It takes practice and there's accountability in that. So, and if you think that, that there isn't accountability, then you're mistaken. Oh, wow. Nerissa's oh, amazing. Um, I, I wanted I to, know. that was great, Nerissa. I want to add to that and actually um, very simply for those to get out of your head, um, a lot of times we're in our heads, right? Um, and to get out of your head, sometimes we have to do something for others. And that seems very simple, but a lot of times we actually truly, um, when we're giving to others, we're kind of reminding ourselves that life is not just about us and that others truly um, need us just like we need them. Um, and so that would, that would be some homework that I wanna give everyone that yes. is in your head and that is in a place of negativity um, justifiably so with everything that is going on. But I just want to encourage you to try your best to see what can you do um, just it for maybe two hours um, for someone else. And that actually is healing um, in itself. That's really good advice. Chris, what yes. are you doing for others? Uh, I always do for others, man. This phone right here, they call me all day, every day. DMs, Chris, help me, help me, help me. And the pack and the piggyback off Narissa, I used to tell my little when I used to coach basketball, when we were shooting free throws, we were working on our layups. I used to tell my kids, perfect practice prevents piss poor performance. And I'm listening to Narissa. These people need to practice this new attitude. Perfect mm -hmm. practice prevents piss poor performance. So if you're not practicing people, you're going to perform very poorly. <laughs> you are reminding me of, what was it, the Looney Tune that had the succotash, the tit -tip 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 -tip. Yeah, succotash, that's Who my guy. Who was that? Who was that? That dude. Um, Ed, you have to know. Was it oh, the Looney Tune? Who was that guy? Anyway. Looney Tunes? Oh, gosh. But that was it. Perfect, all the time. Perfect Thank practice you. prevents piss poor performance. That's my message for today. Well, guys, I mean, I got to tell you, we've had such an amazing response from our online audience. Jennifer, what have you been what have you been seeing out there? Well, something really interesting I've seen on Facebook Live through that chat is that our guests are actually helping each other out. So oh, wow. cool. while you guys are talking and they're talking to you, they're also answering each other's questions. They're setting up a new Facebook group about gratitude. And they're giving each other ideas about um, how they can make income. So it's really fascinating to see that happening and how this chat has been so therapeutic and has been so inspiring to them. So yeah. yes. fantastic. I think that's amazing. And whoever is setting up that group, please invite the ArtServe staff. Please invite yes. us because um, we feel like as we get to the 90 minute mark, I think we've reached it for, for depression is no joke for this mm -hmm. session. Yes. Yes. As we get to this, the end of this show, we feel like there have been so many questions, so many um, chats 
and messages that we could fill a whole other show with with this and we don't want we don't want to leave you guys hanging we do want to address every single comment so if there's an opportunity for us to come back we definitely want to do that um but if you guys are forming a group we'd love to participate as well and offer as much positive energy to you as possible and i see all my colleagues here nodding their head yes <laughs> so i yes, think everybody and and, and, I, and I have to also say, Chris, someone asked, where and when are you performing? Oh, wow. Oh, this is beautiful. Well, Dr. Tasha and I will be doing a show tomorrow. But Saturday, I'm well, that's a private gig. I'm in Boca on Saturday. You'll love this, Ed. I am doing a show for BACA, B-A-C-A, -A, Bikers Against Child Abuse. I'm doing their state convention in Boca Raton. I tell jokes anywhere. Uh, clean or mean comedy. I'll leave my information in the uh, comments there. I'm trying to get tech savvy here, but uh, I do clean or dirty comedy. I do it at therapy places. I'll come to your church. I'll cuss you out or I'll do it clean. It doesn't matter. My motto is if you have the money, I have the funny. I have opened for Tiffany Haddish, Ricky Smiley, D. Ray Davis. I am the winner of the Ultimate Miami Comedian 2018 and the best in Boca. I am that guy. Thank you very much. Oh, wow, what a resume. <laughs> Dr. Tasha, tell our audience. Tell our audience right now where they could catch your show. Uh, so that you got, they could see some more Dr. Tasha and, and Chris Priester. Oh uh, we I are, don't. matter of fact, right now, Drive By Therapy, we are on YouTube. We have about 12 episodes uploaded. Uh, YouTube, Drive By Therapy, it's free to subscribe. I will say this, Dr. Tasha and I were very nice today. We usually work <laughs> at night, alcohol assisted, with a lot of cursing. Um, most of the time, we are relationship-based. We do relationship show. Uh, but we are expanding ourselves due to quarantine. We're doing depression today. Tomorrow, we're doing a whole show on race and culture in 2020 about race and all that good stuff. And I'm going to use all my skills as a fifth-generation practicing Uncle Tom. It's going to come out tomorrow. Yes, I am that guy. Yes. We're not doing it. No, my last name, Tasha. We're not, we're not doing it's, that. We're not doing Priester. that. My last name is Priester. You know, I had good owners. Hi. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have good ownership. So every, to everyone that has been listening, um, I just want to say thank you for um, listening and um, and moving to solution. I, like, love that. I can see Narissa smiling. Like, that's yeah. what we right? Not just talking about the problem, but getting to how to resolve it. Uh, my name is Dr. Tasha, and I do drive-by therapy um, in my real life um, in terms of my private practice. But for fun, we do a drive-by therapy talk show every first Thursday. Um, you can always reach me on um, IG or Facebook is Dr. Tasha. So Dr. Tasha, but with the Spanish twist, um, D-O-C-T-O-R-A. So Doctora and then Tasha. And she is fluent in Spanish. That's not a play on words. She is fluent in Spanish. <laughs> and so... Um, if you can go onto one of the websites, it's <laughs> www.drivebytherapy.org. I will actually personally want to find a way to get you any resources wherever you are from um, Alaska uh, to the West Indies. Um, but we will find a way that if you're really, truly depressed, suicidal, or having suicidal thoughts, um, you know, just hella anxious and just really struggling right now, we can definitely help on a, um, we as clinicians can definitely help on a real individual basis if that's needed. So just go on the website, go on the contact, and I will personally call you tomorrow um, to make sure that you get the help you need. That's drivebytherapy.org. Thank you, ArtServe. We really appreciate it. Dr. Tasha, I, I want to say thank you for being here, but I want to I, I just want to leave you with this because I feel like I, I want to convey how many people online have, have you know, um, been positive about your presence here. But I got a, a private text where somebody said to me, uh, Dr. Latasha is the truth. And, and so I just want you to know that people hear you, they respect you, and they feel like what you're offering is great. So keep doing what you're doing. Uh, and, and, and Narissa, same for you. We got a lot of people responding mm -hmm. very favorably to what you had to say. And we're so glad that all of you could be here to share your gifts 
and share your knowledge because so many people at home need to have this kind of conversation. And uh, hopefully in the future, we'll all be able to come back together again and continue a conversation about better health and better living and better mental health outcomes uh, for anyone who's going through a struggle. Thank you. Thank you guys for putting this together. Yes. Yeah. And thank you, ArtServe staff. I mean, you guys did a fantastic job and everybody did great. And I just want to say to all the people at home, if you're on Zoom, if you're on Facebook and, and you joined us today, thank you so much. We're so appreciative. We normally have a really big closing and all that stuff, but we didn't want to do it today. We just wanted to say thank you for being here and we really appreciate you. And hopefully you can come back to ArtServe Live for all of our regular scheduled programming. You wasn't going to end it with a big ending? I'm a comedian. We're going to end it big. I got it. Thank right, you get for it. being a friend. <laughs> Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is through. You're a a confidant. And if you threw a party, oh, you can't oh, everyone to do. You would see the biggest deal would be from me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being a man. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you, Chris, for the big ending. Thank <laughs> you. Go. There you go. All right. Bye, everyone. I'll see you guys Thanks later. Later. Right. Right. Bye. Bye. Uh, Art Serve Live. <laughs> yes. <laughs>